Let's go. Let's go. Get out of here. I said, where's Hoss? Where's the caps? Uh, I knew something was wrong. Hoss. <sighs> Hey guys, Dusty Baker, Cross Center's Bison. Welcome back to our channel. Well, we uh, had some late storms last night and I was just in the uh, tool room kind of working on some, uh, putting a workbench in here and uh, we're out of power because we had some rough storms last night. Um, not really in this area. I mean, it blew through and we had uh, some rain and obviously bad enough because we've lost power. But uh, there's some tornadoes up in Norman, Oklahoma. It was worse and other parts of the state but we were fortunate here to just get some wind and some rain but nothing too serious but yesterday um before this all came through marissa and brooks and i were out um messing around and and uh we swung back by the ponderosa to check just i had to run in and get something i looked out into my main lot area which is this lot and where i've had hoss and the and some uh, calves and a couple yearlings and I uh, looked out there and I was like, hey, I was just like, there's some bison in here that aren't supposed to be in here. And um, so I said, where's Hoth? Where's the calves? And uh, I knew something was wrong. And so I thought, oh, I went through the northwest gate with the skid steer. And I, uh, instead of, I was being lazy and I've had this problem before, I just looped my chain. Instead of chaining it and actually latching it, I just looped it. Um, and it's this gate right here. And uh, knowing who, I'm going to point the finger. Yeah, I'm going to point the finger. And it's going to be, I'm going to blame this one on Haas. And first, I'm going to blame it on me for not latching it actually correctly. But I'm going to point the finger at Haas for probably rattling the gate and knocking the loop loose. And uh, letting them all out and letting some others back in. So, but I'm just up here working at the barn, like I said, and they're so curious and they're wanting their cubes probably right now. They all came up here and they were peeking at me, looking in the barn and whatnot. Uh, but now, uh, since I've got them all up here, uh, there's like 27 of them in here right now with those yearlings. I got some calves in here and I wanna keep Haas and them separated. Um, but uh, since I got them in here, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can gate cut them to keep the calves separate uh, from the yearlings. So let's uh, try that. See, you can loop it. Oh, that's super muddy. Nice. You can loop it right through here. Right. And then latch it. But I've had them put their mouth on this, pop this loose, and then if you get a rowdy young strapping bull like Haas, he'll bounce it and will basically pull this out. So, and this is still hanging there from yesterday. I remember latching this here and not wrapping it around it because they can't obviously break that loose when you wrap around it. So that's completely my fault. Need to catch you, you, you. For sure. We're assuming they want back out, so we're gonna see if some of these guys will cut real quick. If they want back out, who knows, they may not. Oh, thanks for peeing. You can go. Definitely don't want that little calf right there to go. You can go, boss.
быстро. All right, so when I started rattling this gate right here, they came walking over here. They're curious. They probably went over here in this trap, what I call the trap, directly behind me. So we're going to let these guys out slowly. Let them by me. One of the reasons I was trying to keep Haas up here is because I've had him separated to just to try to get him to gain some weight and keep him from jumping over the fence like 54 has. And he's trying to get in there with some of those females and the Big Joe herd. I was trying to keep him separated, but he kept giving me problems and, and was blocking the gate basically. And every time I would step in to block Haas from getting out where the heifers were, um, I finally just gave up and allowed him in and I just knew that I could catch him again at some point and gate cut him. So I just went ahead and let him in so I could get the other two females that wouldn't come through.
took a minute, but that was the, this is the original group that I had up here. So I've got two uh, yearling heifers I was gonna put in the Missouri cell, and then I've got uh, five calves that I brought from the uh, Dunbar place. Or, or two of these calves in here were born at the Ponderosa. The other three were brought over from mom and Kevin's with the Dunbar herd. So um, this is the original group that I had in here before the gate was open. Oh, and Haas. I had to go ahead and let Haas in here with these yearlings that he's used to being with just so I could get them out because he's kind of got to watch him. He can be kind of a pain in the butt. So but they want in here where this feed is. So I'm going to I've got a I've got a gate over there I'm gonna try to run them out of and they can go back to their own pasture which is uh, where they belong originally so that is gate cutting again which you probably see me do before so a lot of the times I use this paddle with me not to hit them or anything like that it's basically uh, it makes me bigger and I can uh, use this to stretch out whenever I'm trying to cut and stuff you can see me trying to stretch out with this thing and um, just make me look bigger and <laughs> make me look longer basically um, it gives me a better reach form and uh, it's it's not a defense mechanism or nothing like that I mean this ain't gonna hurt a bison so um, that's kind of why I use this paddle plus it just makes me feel better <laughs> when I have something in my hand I don't know why uh, you know, it's like uh, I've said it before. It's like George Strait standing on stage singing without a guitar. You know, it's just there's something not right about it. So, anyways, that's why I do it. This is the way the gate should be latched. All right, so that's open. Now we got to go back over here and try to get them to go back this is a nice little trap here they've cleaned it up and now it's all green and stuff it looks good got some fertilizer out here for me um this is a place i try to keep green grass and i have to mow it sometimes but eventually the horse i can let her out here see there's the main entry but i i like to kind of keep this place clean um and i let them in here every now and then to graze it down so next thing is we'll see if we can get them get them out of here Come on, kids. I want some of that candy. Come on. There's our jack wagon. Shoot. Let's go. I have to go around. Ah. Come on. Get. Get. Stop. Let's go. Just jacking around is all you're doing. Go. They want this feed. Go. Ugh. I may not can use my hands on this one. I'm going to have to set this down and see if I can get them. Go. Get. Get. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Go, get. Let's go. Go. Woo! Get. Go, shoot. Go. Go. Once I get them going, we can get them. They'll run once they see the lane. Go, shoot. Go. Go, go, turd. Go. That's 1507 right here. She's the boss of them. Come on. Go. Go. Cubes would get them for sure, but all it takes is one to 
kind of see the light and once they take off the rest of them should follow let's go go oh look at him going back quit being a jack wagon go 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 problem child go let's go go get out of here get out of here go go sorry hope you guys aren't dizzy by now <laughs> I'm using the GoPro to film. It's a little, has a bit better stabilization than my phone does. I'll just let them ease up here. One sees it right there. They see it, they'll go. I'll all follow. That one, there they go, they see it now. They should all go out now. See, now I can, now I just step back. They're going the right direction. So hopefully the two stragglers in the back see them. The whole herd going, ah, oh, one, go. Normally you can step back and, and let them go. But they don't want to go out in that pasture because they know there's feet up here. Go, go, go through that gate. Your buddy did. Shoo! Shoo! Oh, I see. Yeah! Go! Oh, dang it. I look at them, they're all coming back. It's hard to do it when you're by yourself. Really needed one more person. Either. All right, cubes got their attention. Probably should have just done this 10 minutes ago. All right, here we go. Well, I was gonna give them cubes anyway, so I got all of them in there. No, I didn't. Hoss. Ugh. Hoss, and it looks like one more. So I'm gonna have to hurry since I poured cubes out and try to get these others in there.
three. There's three in there. These days it doesn't bother me. Oh, see, there goes one. Maybe they'll all go follow her. They see it. Go, go. Yeah, there they go. It's okay if he stays. They see the fence. Come on. I got you. Keep going. You got it. Ideally, you don't have a gate in the middle of this, but for to work bison, but this is typically not something that we have bison in here that gate like they just went through is just for me to drive through in the pasture because this is pasture one this is two three fourths is in the back so they're not it's okay for them because they're not taught to go through here necessarily but they went through and that's what we needed so all of the yearling heifers are in here Haas is up here that's okay Well, I hope I didn't make you guys sick. Um, blah, 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 running around crazy. But um, kind of show you what it looks like from my point of view. By the way, I'm gonna put a disclaimer here right now. That is not the safest thing to do, okay? If you go to Yellowstone or other ranches, do not do what I just did. And the reason I say that is I'm around these animals every day, every day. And uh, I'm in the pen with them almost every single day. And uh, they're used to me. I'm used to them. I, I, uh, we've, you know, built a trust level. Yes, they can be wild and dangerous, of course. And I have to watch my distance and and be sure what I'm doing, especially with this guy right here. Um, him, just because he's starting to show some fight sense. He's been that tough teenager rebel a little bit, so that's okay. Um, but just telling you guys, if. Uh, if you do try to get in with bison, don't do it. If you try to do what I do, um, just be very, very careful. If you're a bison rancher, then you understand. You don't even need to really hear what I'm saying. But if you're not used to bison, don't do what I just did. Um, ideally, you could do you could do some of that sort of work with a horse. You know, it's a lot faster than uh, me on foot. But anyways, with that being said, Haas, it's okay to keep him up here because I had him up here. He's getting some feed with these calves for their winter rations that they're getting uh, before the green grass hits and we let them out. Um, he's already making his way over there. He wants out with those yearling heifers that he pretty much was raised with. Um, and they're all about to turn two years old. Uh, so they'll, they'll hit the breeding age and then they'll all be able to breed this June and July um, or this July and August really is the dates on that but leaving him up here with these uh, calves and two yearlings uh, is not a problem uh, the reason i pulled him up if you if you uh, haven't seen it you have to go back and watch a couple of videos ago um brooks and i came out to check the bison in my truck and hoss had jumped the fence in that low spot that i have to repair speaking of that's what i'm going to do today is i'm going to go repair that fence um, where 54 our jumper had been jumping and Haas probably copied from her and I know a lot of you said if one does it they'll all do it and they'll teach each other yes I know uh, part of it's my fault because I haven't been down there to repair that top of that fence yet and uh, there's no major issues you know right now uh, when it comes to breeding season it could be a little bit different or rotating pastures and stuff so 54 she'll jump the fence and she'll go right back she'll come she'll jump the fence she'll come get some feed hey whatever it is with the urine and i'll come the next day and she'll be back over with uh, the big herd so i don't even have to go and put her back with big joe she just does it and so no it's not good she's jumping fences but she's pretty smart to go back with her herd and she doesn't stay with the yearlings and hoss at all really very long she just comes and gets snacks and and heads out um even though i eventually give the, her snacks too with the big joe herd um but i like leaving um uh him in here right now he's getting some feed and uh you know he can he can gain some weight before the summer hits and he's gonna get real busy like i said come july and august it'll be hoss's first time to start breeding and so um he, he'll need to have all he can uh to run as many earrings as he as he can so um anyways that's why i have him up here but now i can let these calves in here and let them graze it down some
Hey girl. Brooks and I are out here chilling, hanging out. It's been beautiful uh, the past couple of days, and so we're soaking it all in. And between the storms, it seems like springtime is almost here uh, already. Is knocking on the door, but in Oklahoma, we could have uh, we could have freezing temperatures in March or April. Thank you guys for watching us. See you soon.